My wife was crying, and a lot of women were crying. Imagine seeing your own kids sleeping on the floor. Why can't they get them a room and a bed? Do you really say what I think he just said? You think you are entitled to a bed? An illegal? When we got our own people out here who are in the same position, you think you become first? You should get first picks? Where am I living? Where the hell am I? Where is America? Where is it? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be commenting on NBC New York's version of NYC migrant crisis likely started with confusion at the border. <sighs> yes, I am a vet and this immigration issue needs to be dealt with. But without further ado, let's see what they have to say and I'm going to comment on their crap. My wife was crying, and a lot of women were crying. Imagine seeing your own kids sleeping on the floor. Why can't they get them a room and a bed? Do you really say what I think he just said? You think you are entitled to a bed? An illegal? When we got our own people out here who are in the same position, you think you become first? You should get first picks? Where am I living? Where the hell am I? Where is America? Where is it? An all hands on deck moment. This is it. This is it. We're very concerned about the safety and well being of these individuals who are coming to our state. And we're working closely with the city of New York to get them supportive housing and to meet their needs. What does it take to get a more in-depth look into the week's top local news stories? The Debrief brings you inside for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our reporters. Every week, right here, right now. The Debrief. Hello everyone, David Ushery here with News 4 Government Affairs reporter Melissa Russo, who recently has been doing some deep dive reporting on what has been a national issue, but we learned recently it has touched this tri-state in a significant way. We're talking about a surge of asylum seekers. Melissa, tell us about- First off, these are not asylum seekers. These are economical, opportunistic people who are seeking basically upward mobility in social economical structure here that's around that that's just globally right now and they are doing this at the naivety of our president or maybe it's not naivety maybe it's being done on purpose but let's go back reporting what is happening right now with these migrants who are coming largely from Venezuela. They're coming across the border from Venezuela into Texas and Arizona. And what's different now is that um, they're being sent to New York. So now suddenly New York is in the position of receiving um, what started, the number started about 10 days ago as a 2,800 estimate. And more recently, Mayor Adams said it's more like 4,000 of these migrants. Good. Many of them are families. Good. Some of them are single adults. And they are coming into our homeless shelter system, which is already crowded. Um, right. So it's creating um, pressure on the city, on our social service systems. The families are not um, set up with regular food programs. They don't, they're not entitled to food stamps or public assistance, even though they are here legally. So See, and that right there is what gets me. No, they are not here legally. They are here illegally. Until they are given status for asylum, a refugee they are here illegally okay just because you want to slap a sticker on because they crossed over during an, an administration that just seems to don't give a shit about americans don't give a shit about our own security that doesn't mean that they are here the right way they are here illegally you're right they don't deserve to be set up with food stamps and welfare that's for us our tax dollars should be going back to us not these weaklings you know it's becoming a bit of a, of a crisis so the mayor from your reporting tries to get out in front of it makes the announcement and then of course you doing your due diligence you start to peel away the layers and there are the complexities to the issue the right. mayor announces advocates say hold on 
Walk us through that. Well, it started as an issue where Mayor Adams came out and said, hey, federal government, we need help. Send us money if you want us to take care of these people. We're no, you declared yourself a sanctuary city. You do that. See, that's the beauty of having state sovereignty. You get to pass laws that the federal government may not or uh, may or may not like. And in this instance, you pass laws to have us uh, be, to become central of uh, what is it? Uh, rep, um, safe haven cities where you do not need to cooperate with the federal government when it comes to tracking illegals and all this other stuff. Now you want their help with you want tax dollars help to help you contain an issue that you voted on and you passed. I don't think so. Because this then becomes an, an, an issue that will just be forced upon everyone to deal with because you decided in your hair, your hair brain, brain naivety ideas to let in a whole bunch of people knowing good and well they would be a, a burden on the system and a strain to, to the, the pockets of people who are already here legally and citizen and you know born here by right who are paying into this system that is supposed to be taking care of them so no i'm glad i'm glad the federal government has said no at every turn and i hope they continue to because you brought this upon yourselves in new york and california have them we need money then um i have been covering homelessness a long time. Yes. We managed to find some of these families and talk to them about what they were I'm experiencing. So sorry for you. Uh, we learned that some of the families in the system were um, hungry because the shelters and the hotels where they were staying temporarily yeah, don't always serve three meals a day because a lot of our local homeless are on food stamps or public assistance. They can afford to buy food. These folks don't work. Don't so care. it's a, a little bit we don't of a care. different situation. I don't care. And then I had a family tell me, um, first one family, but then other families, that they were remaining sleeping on floors and benches in the intake office, which we know from the mm -hmm. history of covering homelessness in New York City, is a very taboo subject. It's, right. it's illegal. It's been the subject of major court battles for many mayors. And it sort of had stopped for at least 10 or 12 years. It's the first time we've heard of this happening. And then more recently, um, we started reporting on the fact that when these folks are put on a bus in yeah. Texas and sent to New York, they're given a form. And we found out and reported that um, Border Patrol agents mm -hmm. in Texas right. were putting sort of random arbitrary addresses on these forms, handing them to the migrants. The migrants show up here, and then when they get here, they find out that these places are actually office buildings. They might be charities. Yeah. It looks like someone made an effort to find a charity. Set up. To take not families. set up to take people so These it's like a, it's an locations. administrative office or it's a women's shelter that can't take men and children so it's, it's it's not you know if you were trying to plan this out and give people a heads up and make sure they have a good landing right. here that that's not where you'd send them so we have dual tracks here we have the city response first which mm -hmm. initially the Adams administration defended its response so far saying hey we've been hit with a tsunami they did. here they did they said we've been hit with a tsunami and they also you didn't care when Texas was hit with a tsunami that's a hundred times of what you're getting Getting. a matter of fact you were encouraging it you were demonizing the Texans when they were saying this is has become uncontrollable you kept demonizing saying that the border is telling them everyone in the world gaslighting us that the border is secure when no they were telling you thousands and thousands of people were entering our country illegally deal with it deal with it you were forcing Texas to now you eat Whatever you eat, whatever the hell you made, you lay in the bed that you made. Admitted to illegal violations um, with, you know, keeping families overnight in their system involving four families. And they insist that that's... So, so let, me, let me get this right. Let me get this straight. You, you will say it's messed up and illegal and breaks the law when illegals are inside of a building that they're not supposed to be in illegally um, because they're supposed to be in a placed in a home or placed in a place to live or some sort of shelter but you won't call them trespassing onto our sovereignty illegal like that is some crazy shit when you think about it so they can't be in a building um after a certain time because that's illegal but they can cross into our country with no fucking regard to the people that live here and that's not a problem for you the case your homeless advocate sources said what however 
The homeless advocate sources were suspicious of the mayor's announcement from the beginning yeah. because they, uh, when they heard that there was a 2,800 person bump over a six week period, they thought it was odd since it doesn't seem to be reflected in the data that the city releases every day. It's called the census. Okay. City puts it out every day. They didn't see the kind of bump that would reflect this sort of surge. And they thought maybe the mayor was trying to deflect from some other bureaucratic and management issues which are causing a bottleneck in the system. More families coming in because of course rents are so high right now. You know, the eviction moratorium stopped. You have more families coming in, but fewer families moving out into permanent housing, causing sort of a bottleneck. And that was a pre-existing condition before we started seeing these migrants. And what are they saying now, now that they've looked at it and you've reported on it? Well, yeah. now they're still sort of saying that there needs to be accountability. They called for um, city council hearings, which are now going to happen early in early August. Um, they have given some credit to City Hall for cleaning up the front end of the sh uh, homeless uh, shelter intake office system. Uh, they are no longer sleeping on the floors and benches overnight okay. to the extent that they were before. Yeah. Um, so that's that's an improvement. And I think, you know, there's, the City Hall has said, you know, these legal advocates, the Legal Aid Society in particular, instead of criticizing us, we wish they would come with us and lobby the federal government for more help so we can manage it. Now what we've learned and also reported is that uh, the Adams administration is looking to open a service center mm. or a welcome center here in New York. Similar to the kind of welcome center we see, say, in San Antonio, okay. a place where the you know they can do one-stop shopping and get some of the you know confusion uh, right. cleared up. And I know you continue to reporting on this in terms of the Customs and Border Patrol mm -hmm. and where they're sending them with these addresses. Right. Uh, have we been able to get a response on that yet? We know we're gonna, you're going to continue reporting we, on it. Uh, they know we're working on it. They're aware of our reporting on it. They've also been alerted by charities who have been encountering this. Charity. So that's another thing. Charities, you do not have the right to break the law. Citizens cannot break the law. Your asses should not be break to, um, um, your asses should not be allowed to break our law. And then on top of that, use our tax paying dollars. I don't care if you have church written on the back of your organization. You should know that what you're doing is against the law and you're breaking the law. I'm pretty sure God has something to say about that. But anyways, and the fact that you would put other people above your own, why aren't you with your church charities helping out people here? You're busy helping people who don't even belong in this country. I don't know what kind of guilt you have, but why don't you focus that guilt on the people who need it here? And I'm not talking about the ones who like to be welfare and welfare queens. Okay, we don't, I don't like entitled people of any kind, whether it be American or non-American. So freaking get your act together. And honestly, there needs to be a law passed for that. If you, if you are, if you are an NGO and you use taxpayer dollars to basically in, um, uh, break the law. And in this case, human trafficking, children trafficking, you should be barred from receiving any type of federal aid period. I don't know what makes you guys think you're above the fucking law, but if this is a regular person, you think I could just go to the federal government, the state government, and be like, oh, you need to give me a whole bunch of tax dollars so I can, I'm, a, I'm bringing a whole bunch of illegals who don't belong here to begin with in the first place? No! These people are insane. Who are very upset because they're getting mail for hundreds of migrants whose whereabouts they don't know, okay. and, and this, this is the kind of mail that tells them show up in court or you could get deported. And so, you know, Catholic get Charities deported. National Organization, I was told, had reached out to Customs and Border Patrol. I don't think we're the only people that have alerted them about right. this. Though City Hall tells us they were unaware of it. So, you know, we're waiting for a response from Customs and Border Patrol as to why this might be happening. Why this City might be happening? I can tell you why this might be happening. You don't know. You can't understand. You can't tell me now. You don't understand why there's a bottleneck when you've had over a million illegals come into our country, burning the system, and somehow you still can't get it through your thick head why this is happening? Maybe because the system can't handle it. Maybe because there is such thing as finite resources. Okay, this is not the land of the plentiful and bountiful. When we, there, you can't complain about population control, but then letting a whole bunch of people and not think that, and letting a whole bunch of people when you don't have an uh, the adequate amount of space, you don't have an adequate amount of resources, and expect there to not be some friction. 
it's like a fool's quest to think that nothing was going to happen. Like everything was going to be good. Everything was going to be okay. None of this stuff was, you have got to be an idiot. South Bronx. Are you driving way less than you used to? Do you have a clean driving record? Are you over 25? Do you know? Worlds away from their home in Venezuela, a family waits for a better life. 14 days ago, Edgar Bracamonte crossed the Mexican border into Arizona, then boarded a bus to New York. He says he's in search of a better future for his children, and he's holding on to hope, trying to stay patient and calm. Edgar is one of thousands of migrants who have arrived here on the doorstep of the New York City homeless shelter system in recent weeks, an unanticipated stop in a quest for political asylum. But we do need help. Political to deal asylum? With that is not political asylum. Wave of the that is, and you're trying to come here under economical distress. That is not a reason for political asylum. Take your ass back home, stand up against your government, tell them what you want. You want to have a capitalist society so you wouldn't have this issue. This is not political asylum. People, words have meanings. Words have meanings. Those who I need of shelter. Mayor Eric Adams this morning announced that 2,800 migrants like Edgar have flooded into the city's already crowded homeless shelter system in the past Good. six weeks. Take he says border medicine. states like Texas and Arizona are shipping the migrants here because New York, unlike other states, has a right to shelter, meaning they won't turn people away. No, don't. they're trying to use words. No. Don't, don't sit here and say the reason why they're shipping you there is because they have a right to shelter. No, you are a sanctuary city. You declared it, you pay, pay, passed laws for it, and now you have to lay in, lay in that. Don't try to use some other fancy types of words to rearrange and try to trick people's brains into thinking something else or using some freaking slogans to make people feel bad because they won't get on or hop on your little glory ass sanctimonious tr um, train. You did this, lay in your fucking beds, and all of people who voted for it well guess what maybe just maybe you'll move when you realize you're, the people who are supposed to represent you actually don't give two shits about you hmm maybe you should maybe you should move and then you know what's going to happen illegals are going to move into their places they're going to be used like slave labor let's i mean maybe not use like slave labor slave labor but you saw how these individuals come over here thinking that they should be entitled to this stuff no this is what this is how their own freaking um, countries crumbled and then now they want to come over here thinking that they can repeat wash rinse and repeat here okay some illegals who are coming over here for economical um, um, distress, they might do well, but I don't think it's okay. I don't think it's fair. And I'm done with this. <laughs> I don't think it's fair. And what does that say to all those who want to come over here the right way? What does that say to those who come over here, spend thousands of their own, you know, dollars, putting themselves in debt to come over here to try to pursue a better life? They get kicked back to the line. I remember in grad, well, actually it was like right when I finished grad school, I was still living in student housing because I wanted to save up for a home. And guess who was there? I was roomed with someone who was from India. He told me that he made a, a very risky decision to put himself in debt. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was around like six or seven thousand dollars usa dollars but if he were to go back and he didn't somehow pay um was able to pay off you know six thousand dollars while he's here and basically get that by getting an american job once he's done with his phd he would be in debt for life if he went back to um, um india so it's like it's individuals like that I, and you know i grew up in the computer science oh, well, i went to school in the computer sciences so there's a lot of immigrants or i should yeah immigrants that are come over here or um foreign students that come over here that pay thousands of dollars in hope that once they finish a the degree they'll be able to stay here and get a job and these people get a free fucking pass it's like a slap in the face it's like a slap in the face to merit your hard work everything but that yet these liberals here i swear to god they don't give two shits about them 
Like you, yo, dude, they're actually contributing to our our society. They're actually contributing to our economy, albeit, you know, liberal schools where they don't really actually give you give a shit, but at least they're not going to school for these dumbass degrees or going to school for engineering and computer science, people, stuff that we need to make our country competitive with others like China and India and all this stuff. Like they understand that. That's why they come here and do the jobs that Americans don't want. And yeah, you can say that about illegals too, but the matter, the point is, who are you going to put above the other? Because right now, you're telling all those who are willing to, who believe in the American dream, you're telling them fuck off. And you're letting them motherfuckers who, who, who think they're entitled, who think they're already entitled to our shit. Like, fuck that. I'm like, no, no. And anyone who agrees, anyone who fucking agrees, you're not American. You're unfucking American. And honestly, I would, I would literally pay the sing your ass to China, where you, or the sing your ass to Cuba, or sing your ass to Venezuela if you voted for this stuff because you, you want, you want the government to take care of you so bad. You want that? I'll send you to a country that does that and see how fast you'll come here because you'll realize, oh man, well maybe, maybe I'm not content. Maybe I'm not content with just living like, because guess what? You've already seen what it's like to live as a capitalist. You'll come back so happy. Arms open wide saying, I love America. I love capitalism. But you know what? No, that's what I would do. Like, just to get that shit out of your head. It has never worked, okay? It's never worked. And we, if anything, we should be bringing people here who actually believe in that, that uh, like, attaining uh, the American dream, or at least getting us back to that. Not people who would come here with their fucking hands open, like they deserve everything just because they are alive. No, fuck that. But that's my rant.